Welcome to Windows 7. This is where we left off last week. You will notice that this is, in fact, a virtual machine. This is not a, a physical computer. I can, I can zoom out. I can zoom in. Type in a username. Following your example, I am going to use Robbie. Works. But I like the way Robbie PC automatically comes. It up automatically to the says Robbie PC. <laughs> yeah. So make sure that if you already have a computer on the on the network that's called Robbie PC, or John PC, if you follow the example to a T, be careful. You don't want to have the same name. I might have. So just to be safe, I'm going to call this Robbie Dash Win Seven, and I'm going to hit next. You remember I talked last week about the fact that the installer is pretty intuitive. It doesn't ask a lot of questions, and it lets you get through the installation procedure fairly easily uh, without being bombarded with, uh, with irrelevant questions. So here we've got, you know, type in a password. OK. Makes sense. Type in a password hint. That's never a good idea, as far as I'm concerned. Tomato. Oh, why do you say that? Well, if you're prone to forget your password, then feel free to give yourself a hint, but know that you're giving that hint to everyone else who doesn't know your password. Hmm. So if your, your hint is uh, your the birthday. name of your dog, because <laughs> yeah. most people are not thinking along the lines of, oh, well, this is my laptop computer, somebody could steal it, and then they've got access to my files if my hint is I've even seen people put their hint as their password oh if I forget it I'll just push hint and it'll tell me what my password is so be careful of that <laughs> so usually I just put in gibberish there because I don't forget my passwords hmm. that's an important thing keep a spreadsheet uh, Windows 7 prompts for a product key and allows you to automatically activate the operating system I believe we can skip this step if we're in the case where, like tonight, I just want to do this for a demo. I don't actually want to... No, it's not going to let me, I don't think. Oh, it did. That's cool. So this will give me like the trial version of Windows 7 because we're skipping over the, uh, the, the serial key. I do have my serial key, but just to save time, I'm not going to type it in. Uh, so this is like our firewall and how we uh, update our computer. Use recommended settings. Install important updates only. This is, this is updates, obviously. Or ask me later. This is a virtual machine. I kind of want to keep it up to date and let Microsoft update it because it doesn't, you know, I don't need to monitor what updates are going on. If this was a real computer, a physical computer, I might consider just having it download the updates and then I will install them on my time because I don't like Microsoft rebooting my computer overnight without my permission. In this case, I'm going to use recommended setting because I'm feeling dangerous <laughs> when I give Microsoft all the power. Mm -hmm. Not really. Oh, okay. I'm clicking away because I got an email coming at the same time. So, it's giving me a rather realistic uh, time zone. Minus 8 Pacific time, US and Canada. They are not defaulting to Tijuana with Windows 7, which is interesting because apparently Microsoft has a pretty huge user base in Tijuana. Really? Yeah, not really. <laughs> Windows XP, when you install it, defaults to Tijuana as your time zone. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Okay. Now it's going to ask, this is basically to do with your firewall. Do you want to access, is this computer on your home network, which is going to basically open it up for access. Uh, work network, which is going to allow you to access files back and forth, but it's going to put up a little bit of security for you. And a public network is basically uh, going to lock down your computer in such a way that uh, people can't access anything on it. So the reason that you wouldn't want to go with a public network if it's for home is because you want to be able to share a printer. You want to be able to share files back and forth between other computers on your home network. So if you lock it down, you're going to lose access to those kind of helpful things. So I'm going to go home network. There we go. Connecting to my network, applying settings. Everything's pretty verbose. You can see that there is quite a bit of text there to tell us a little bit about what it is that we're doing. Hey, look! <gasps> It's the Windows logo. Just before, yeah. Uh, a new that. one, kind of. It's pretty fandangled. Mm -hmm. they've, they've gone and put a bird on it. <laughs> That's a and fur a, fly. And a couple of vector circles. <laughs> and, and a, a, and a an old school tree. lens flare. 
and crosshairs for the gamer in you. But hey, you know, they they try. It, it does. Maybe look, that's the fleur de lis. It looks pretty good. That is, that's kind of silly out of the box, but there are a number of good wallpapers that are included with the system. It's got a nice little randomization system that will automatically change your desktop wallpaper. We're going to look at the feature set of Windows 7 at a later date, as I was mentioning, but as I was saying, we're in a virtual machine here. So interesting thing is that it's actually running within Ubuntu Linux. So the final step to your installation of a Windows uh, virtual machine within your Linux desktop environment, or any, you know, if you want to virtualize at all, you need to install uh, the drivers that are going to give it access to all the different various things that VirtualBox has to provide, like uh, graphic acceleration, mouse acceleration, things like that. So the way to do that through our Linux, uh, through this, I'm running Ubuntu, and I've got Windows 7 here installed. I'm going to click on Devices. Notice that I've switched out of full screen. It's the right control key and the F button. I'm going to hit Devices, Install Guest Additions. And then I'm going to hit Back to Full Screen. I was going to show you the desktop wallpaper, but maybe we'll get to that another day. Because it's more important that we get this thing working tip-top. So that will actually uh, detect that a CD has been inserted. It's a virtual CD. Indubitably, it's going to happen. Guarantee ya. Will it happen within four minutes? Guest editions, uh, that's going to give you all the drivers and the ability to switch out uh, to, to make Windows part of your cube face if you're using Compass Fusion, things like that. Really just uh, it increases the performance of the virtual machine, gives you a lot of bonus features, and it allows VirtualBox and your main computer, your host computer, to communicate more effectively with the virtual machine. So it's, it's critical that you install those guest editions. Um, so when you click what I clicked there, it's going to basically mount an ISO image. It's going to tell this, the Windows system, the guest operating system, that a CD has been inserted. From there, it's going to go through the auto-run procedure, just like it normally would when you insert a driver CD. Uh, just follow the prompts, and it will install all the drivers that are necessary. You reboot the computer, and everything is good to go. So, not sure if that's uh, going to visually uh, happen today, just on account of the time. But hey, it has been great having you here at Category5.tv.